Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Speaking Sessions podcast. I am Philip Sessions, your public speaking coach. I've got Greg Birch here. He is a, a Tennessee native, and raised in mil by military parents that had an early desire to serve others. After college, Greg commissioned into the U.S. Army as an Army officer and spent 11 years serving his country. He deployed to both Afghanistan and Iraq led soldiers in combat, and was twice awarded the Bronze Star Medal for his actions overseas. Greg's time, experience, and training in the military gave him the foundation that Delta Financial is built upon. He believes that leadership and building a winning culture of discipline and selfless service is the crux of any great organization. And I, I love that right there. I, I totally agree with that. But for over four years, Greg learned that the, the insurance industry and gained the skills to become a record-breaking producer and infused his leadership style into the teams and agents that have come to follow him. Greg's determination to become the best and serve others to reach the, those same top levels are what set Delta Financial apart from other organizations in the insurance industry. And one of his quotes here right at the end, just paraphrasing this, is, be the difference redefine excellence and greg definitely exemplifies that he was telling me right before we got on he's got a hot date coming up after this so we're gonna have a bunch of awesome content come out here right before he goes on the hot date so he's gonna be fired up and his girlfriend's gonna wonder what in the world is going on <laughs> what is wrong with you yeah. but she probably already thinks that anyways because he is also on his last day as we're recording this of phase three of 75 hard, which if you don't know what that is, I don't know where you've been because it's an amazing program on mental toughness and discipline. So this dude has some extreme discipline. And so he's already fired up, but Greg, dude, glad to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, man. Um, so first off, thank you for having me on the podcast, Philip. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. We, I've, we've chopped it up a couple of times. It's always been great conversations. So uh, I do appreciate it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a simple dude, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not special. I always tell people I'm not special. I just learned that if I do things kind of like we were talking about beforehand, if I do the basics extraordinarily well, I come off as extraordinary. So I've been um, that, that, that one person that just I would find something that was very, whatever I was doing in whatever field, like when I was in the military, I would find something very basic and I would master it. So I'd master it to the, to the, the, the best level that I could. And I would compare myself to everybody that could potentially compete with me. And when I, when I went out and performed, it just looked like I was extraordinary when all I was doing was just practicing the basics over and over again. And so, um, I, I, I I've taken that to heart in everything that I've done since I've been, you know, in the military, my 11 years of service and, uh, coming into, coming into insurance, um, which was kind of happenstance, you know, I, I, I wanted to be a 10 to entrepreneur, you know, I wanted to own my own business, work for myself. And it was nice because, um, coming out of the military, you know, everything is, you know, uncle Sam tells me to do everything, where to go, where to be, what mm -hmm. time, and, and very, very structured. Uh, if I wanted to take leave, I had to do a whole rigmarole and, and they're like, Hey, I want to go on a vacation for five days or whatever. Uh, now I got to put in all this paperwork. It's got to get approved. This, that, the other, it's got to be 30 days out, all these things. And it's just like, now I'm like, man, I don't have to ask another grown man to, for permission to go, <laughs> to go do anything that I want to do. I can work remotely. I can go to the beach. I went to Puerto Rico a couple of weeks ago. Cause I was like, man, I want to go worked from the beach. It was amazing. So, um, you know, that I had that, I got that spark coming out that I just, I wanted to work for myself and I really wanted to test my metal and it's been an amazing journey. It's, it really has, it's been a lot of bumpy, uh, instances, a lot of, a lot of, um, challenges, mistakes, um, obstacles I've had to overcome. And, um, for those of you that are listening to this, if you're looking for, um, to become an entrepreneur, I always say just, it's like jumping into a cold pool, right? It, you just have to do it. Like if you try yeah. to go, if you try to tiptoe in what happens, you're, you're like, Oh, it's kind of chilly. You'll go in slowly. You'll get to right. Like 
right about mid thigh and you're like nah man this is no nah, i'm out like uh, because <laughs> it's starting to get too cold and i don't mm -hmm. want to get i don't want to get uh the old private parts in there yeah. it's way too cold so you'll get out right but if you just jump in your body's it's a shock but then you mm -hmm. acclimate and then you're like hey guys water's warm right and you yeah. gotta have that you gotta have that guts to just go all in Oh yeah. And it's just like, well, it can't be worse than this. I'm already soaking wet and <laughs> cold as can be. Can't yeah. get worse. Uh, although you don't want to say that entrepreneurship because you can find a way for it to get worse. <laughs> oh yeah. you can. <laughs> it seems it's, like it's a sure. constant, like it's a constant stress. Like my stress yeah. level is a constant, like 70%, but you get used to it. Like I'm just used to having, because st now stressful situations have hit me and I'm like, meh, whatever. Like, mm. You know, so it, it, I, I, dude, I wake up, I've, I, for the past five years, I've woke up with my butthole puckered. Like, how, how, how am I going to get, how am I going to make sure that my business succeeds today? Right. Mm -hmm. But it, it drives you to continue to push yourself forward every single day. And it, and all it is, it's those basic, consistent actions every single day. So uh, I unknowingly created a good baseline while I was in the military to teach me those like those little basic things so yeah yeah man it's the the mundane things and it's funny because you come from the military where it's always mundane things that are really tedious at the end of the day that really don't seem like they matter mm. but in the military they're like no they matter you yeah, gotta have that matter. that bed yeah you gotta have that bed crisp I was reading a book, I think it was like, make your bed first or something like that. And they talked about how the, the officer would come by and like, if you couldn't bounce the quarter off the bed, like you failed. And basically they always just basically find a way for you to fail. Yeah. <laughs> but like that was one of their tests. And I was just like, man, that is crazy. This bed's supposed to be soft. I realized those probably aren't as soft as the beds we have at our own homes, <laughs> but still the oh, bed's they're, supposed they're to be kind of soft. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. So, but the bed's soft and you've got this fitted sheet probably I, well, actually it's probably not any fitted sheet it's just some kind of sheet and it's supposed to bounce a quarter like that just seems crazy to me but then you tra transition from mundane minor details that they make extremely important to insurance sexy fun everybody loves it insurance <laughs> 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 so yeah you're definitely you definitely like to do the things that I, I guess most people don't like to do because a lot of people don't like to be in the military either which by the way thank you for your service there oh, you. but it's just uh it, it's funny how you made that transition there and i want to go back real quick you you said you don't ask people for permission anymore but you did ask me for permission to be on my podcast no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Greg did not ask for permission. I asked him to come on the podcast. He's like, I'll allow it. So I guess I had to ask for that. <laughs> no, he, so what it is, is I asked him to come on my podcast and then yeah. we, we chopped it up and he was like, dude, that was a great conversation. Do you want to come on mine? I was like, dude, I love it. Yeah. Dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had already been thinking about it, but I, I had so many podcasts already lined up. I'm like, I've got to pause on doing that so I can actually do something else, but I definitely yeah. want to get you. But when we had that call, I'm like, all right, I just need to say, let's do it. And so I'm glad that you're here, but I want to go into the first question real quick. And I know you've spoken on stages before, but how did you get on that first stage? What was the process for you to get on that first stage? I don't know if you hear my, I don't know if you hear my dog. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, um, I, that's all right. Um, so the first time, so honestly, the first time I already like really spoke, to a group. I, I mean, you could call it a stage, but, um, mm -hmm. it was in the military. So, um, the, the way I kind of saw it was anytime you had to speak and, and give like a prepared, um, speech or a prepared message to a group of people, whether it's five people or 50 or a hundred. Um, I started doing that when I was in command, when I had, you know, 160 soldiers where mm -hmm. I would get them and we would have, up, like I'd have them all like, you know, in an auditorium and I would have a specific message that I was putting out. And that's, that's kind of where I cut my teeth was getting used to, because the first time I ever had to do it really speak in front of a couple of people. So as a platoon leader and you're really nervous, right. And you're just like, man, how do I do this? But that was the first time. And, and then when I really, when I'd say like actual stage was at the end of my military career, <clears throat> I worked in the office of the chief of the military intelligence branch and um, I worked on a recruiting on a recruiting team. And so what we would do is we would go from high school to high school to high school, and we would talk about military intelligence as a branch within the army, 
and why you want to be there. And so I actually went to West Point that year and I spoke to the, to the school at West Point and uh, had a whole speech about military intelligence, what we do. I talked about my story, the things that I had done, the, ex the um, experiences that I had in military intelligence, specifically in Afghanistan. Um, when I was in Afghanistan, I, I ran an interrogation facility and I ran sources and uh, for, for a brigade. And so had a real, a lot of really dope missions, a lot of really cool stuff. I worked with, um, multiple three level, three letter agencies. Um, one of them is called, okay. OGA. so, uh, but I got, I, I got to do a lot of really cool stuff, you know? And so, um, I, I was able to do that. So that was really the first time. And it, it really, when you, when I looked at it, it's because of, and this is, I guess, with anything that you, when it comes to speaking on stage, I had, ex, I had a lot of experience to share. Mm -hmm. So I had a, I had a story, I had a message and I experienced and I had, I had the previous actions to back up that I could actually do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I, when I got out of the military and I got into insurance, um, it took, I got an insurance in 2017 and 2019, uh, is the year that I really started getting good as, as like October, 2017, when I got in 2018, I was like, meh, not very good. I, I was struggling, you know, to, mm -hmm. to really make ends meet in 2019. I got very serious about my career and I five X my production from, from about 75,000 total that I'd sold in 2018. And I did 425,000 in 2019. Wow. And so, um, that was when I started getting on stages in my company that I was currently in, they would put me on stage to talk to large groups of agents, to talk to them about, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Hey, this is how you sell. This is how you prospect appropriately. This is how you control your schedule. And I would tell them stories. And I always did it through means of stories to take the point home, to bring it back to like the, the whatever basic fundamental that I was applying and how I applied it and what the impact was to my business. Hmm. So, so, and, and then I, I kind of continued that on to, to now, you know, uh, where I next year in 2023, I've got three very large speaking events that I've got scheduled, um, with a large organization. One of them is about 10,000 people. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> Yeah, man, that that's awesome. So I, I want to break down first real quick. So you, you obviously you were in the military, you were kind of probably forced to do that. You were in this leadership role, mm -hmm. which within leadership roles, typically, you're going to be speaking more in front of people. And yes, it wasn't on a stage per se, like we think about when we think of public speaking, but you still were there in front of a bunch, a bunch of people. And then you transitioned out of that and started speaking to smaller groups. And how has that transition been for you to like, as you started speaking to larger and larger groups, I know you kind of had this large group of military and then went back down to small and it's, it sounds like you're starting to get to bigger and bigger groups. How was that transition for you with speaking the different sized groups and everything? Um, for, for me, the transition is the same. I, I think if you can speak to five people, you know, and all eyes, and it's just like, Hey, all eyes are on me. They're all paying attention to me. I have their undivided attention. Um, you can speak to five, you can speak to 500, right? Mm. It, it's, it's really just, do I have a good message and can I, and can I, you know, present it in a captivating way? Um, the, the, I would say it was actually more nerve wracking for me when I was in the military, I felt more prepared when I came out and I was in insurance because <clears throat> In, in insurance, I had, man, I, I experienced so many other things. Like I had the backing of what I learned in the military and experiences and the leadership and, and, you know, already being, you know, speaking to groups of people, but then coming into insurance, you, you know, the, the actions that I had to do on a daily basis to get to where I could sell 400,000 in a year. Mm. And I, I, I grinded, bro. It was, mm. it was, a, I mean, I experienced a lot in one year. Um, I sat with probably a thousand plus clients wow. and, um, I, I drove, I drove a hundred thousand miles in my vehicle that year. Oh yeah. Going all over Dallas, Fort Worth. And 
I'm talking thousands of phone calls, um, countless hours of training and, and honing my script, getting good on the phone, tweaking, changing things, recruiting at the same time, building an agency, hiring staff, getting my LLC up and going, like all these things I've never done before. And it was, it was like drinking water from a fire hose, but every single thing that I did, I just, I learned it, I grasped it and I kept moving forward. And so now when I, when I go to speak in front of people, I'm talking to people that they're like, how do I, how do I get over dialing on the phone? I'm like, bro, like I'm so far beyond that. Like, that's a, you know what I'm saying? So the confidence level is like super high. Right. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm like, don't you worry, baby bird. I'm going to feed you. Don't you worry. <laughs> So, so uh, I think it was just the experience level. Right. And I, and I'm, I I think naturally I'm also just a a gregarious person. I like to speak to people and I like to help. And I, I don't see it as like a, this isn't about me. Public speaking is not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about making an impact onto other people. It's about helping them. So if I have a message that I know can help them, even if it's one person in the audience that can like change their life, inspire them, get them to move then that's, that's all there is to it. Right. And so yeah. I, I guess I, I it changed my perspective. I, re, I believe, cause in the military, I wasn't trying, I was trying to just rally the troops, right. It was, it's a little bit different. Whereas in, in, in insurance, I don't have like, if, if I sit to, to, uh, um, or speak to a, a group of a hundred or 200 agents, most of them are there. I have, they have no financial impact to me. Yeah. If they go out and, and write business, it does nothing for me. I don't get paid. I don't need to do it. Like mm. I'm doing it just to inspire other people to help them in their lives. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the other big th- difference there too, like military, they were kind of forced to be there because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were their exactly. officer. And even if it wasn't you forcing them, somebody else is forcing them, somebody higher up most likely versus insurance. They're there because they want to learn. They're there because they want to be there, which is a really cool thing. It's such a powerful thing with speaking. Why I always push people to go into speaking and getting on stages because it's one thing whenever you're kind of speaking on social media. It's another thing when you go speak at an actual event because people are there because they want to be there. Social media, they just move past you. I don't feel like listening to Philip today. I don't feel like listening to Greg today. All right, move on. Yeah. And so they're not going to be there for you. And and there's, it's not quite the equivalent, but then, you know, if you're in say a meeting per se, like you're in your meeting for your company or whatever, people kind of have to be there. So it's definitely a different kind of audience that you're talking to for mm-hmm. sure. And you mentioned stories a couple of times, bringing stories up, using your experiences and, and everything like that. How, how did you come about figuring out this was the best way and how do you structure speeches? So, um, have you ever read the book, talk like Ted? Mm-hmm. It's I, I talk like Ted. Uh, and, nice. I, and, and honestly, um, so I, I read that book recently, I'd say within the last six months, but, um, I've just, I, I think it's just more intuition. I've seen a lot of people speaking, right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've always been of the mind that vulnerability is a superpower. Mm. So, when I get on stage and I tell a story of how I massively messed up and like the mistakes that I made and the challenges that I had and the, and the, the, the depths of, of, you know, almost depression and entrepreneurship that I faced and how I overcame it, it humanizes me. It makes me relatable. And then it has a more emotional impact to those people. Cause then they're like, man, this guy's like speaking right to me. Like, it's just like me. And it's because all of us within that realm, within insurance as an entrepreneur, we're facing all the same thing. Like it's all like everyone's facing the same thing. So if I can tell this story or I can tell, train them in a way where I'm telling a story where it's relatable to them and they take it, they actually like absorb it better it makes my message more palatable yeah, and more, more impactful. Yeah. And so um, it's always been, that's how, how I've always tried to do it. Cause I think that it makes a bigger impact. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're exactly right. I, I totally agree with you there. And you mentioned one thing that he's just like me. And that's the key thing right there. When you tell a story, you get people to say that he or she is just like me. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. And, and really you're, 
not that you're trying to say you're better than somebody else, but when you're on stage, you're supposed to be this person that has been through what somebody's going through, but you're on the other side and you're able to help them bridge that gap to get that other side. You're building that bridge for them so they can cross that hurdle that they're working on. And so if you can go back to that story and relate with them, you're exactly right. Just they need to say that, man, they're just like me. And that's mm-hmm. going to help them for sure. So, and, and I like that you use that experience. I know some people, they struggle, maybe, maybe they're speaking to an audience that they don't have that direct experience with. So what are some ways that you, you use or tactics that you possibly use to help you relate to your audience besides with the stories, but sharing your experience, which I know you kind of go into stories with that. Yeah. But how do you share if you don't have a direct experience with the audience? How do you go about trying to share an experience and relate it to the audience? So um, when it comes to, so I, I'm most of the audiences that I'm speaking with, it's going to be something around mindset, like having the right mindset. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which can be applied to entrepreneurship, sales, leadership being more exceptional in your current job, right? It can be, there's, it's very applicable. So knowing the audience ahead of time, I can still use the same story. I'm just going to tailor the learning lesson to that specific audience. So for instance, like right now I'm scheduling, uh, I'm doing talks to local junior ROTC um, to, to high schools. So I can speak to cadets and give them like an impactful message about um, leadership and mindset, right? I'll use a lot of the same stories that I use with, with bigger audiences, but I'm just going to tailor it down to more palatable, like to kids that are in high school, right. Mm -hmm. That will inspire them to, Hey, I want to go in the military and I want to go be an officer or just serve my country, or I want to go become an entrepreneur and I want to, I want to test my metal there. Um, but I'm using the same exact story. It's just the, the lesson is going to be slightly tweaked to, to relate to the people that I'm speaking with. So I will always want to know the the audience that I'm speaking with ahead of time. And, you know, I'm, but I'm going to use the same exact stories to be honest. Mm. Okay. So I, I think ultimately it comes down to the comfortability with being vulnerable. Mm. Like that, I think that's where most people mess up. They don't want to show vulnerability. They don't want to show, they don't want to like own their own crap. I don't know yeah. if I can curse on here. But uh, or what, what you feel about it, but uh, I, they don't want to own their their own their own issues. They want to they want to come off like they're perfect, right? All of us are fallible, man. No one's perfect, and guess what? All the same mistakes that you make, everyone else is making too. All the same feelings that you have that's that's what that's what connects us as human beings. That's why psychology even exists. So my mom's a psychologist. The purpose of psychology even exists is because. There are norms. There's there is alignment with most people. The people that don't align with that, which is the very, very few, the the ones that are outside of that norm, those are the ones that are like psychopaths, right? <laughs> so because they don't follow the, the the normal trend of feelings, emotions, you know, experiences, et cetera, that and how people react to it. So if you can just identify and be it's this is self-awareness, is what it is. Mm. If you can understand like, hey, when this situation happened, I felt this way, this way, this way, and then I reacted to it in this way, this happened, or I reacted to it in in Y or Z way, and then this happened and I succeeded, well, guess what? Nine out of 10 people will do the same thing. Hmm. So just tell them the whole story so that they can see you're painting the picture so they can actually see the pathway that you took. And Hmm. more than likely, the, the starting point, the mess up, they're going to be able to be like, dude, I'm messing up just like that. Or they can find, they can put themselves. Cause when you tell a story, what happens? You put yourself into the the shoes of the yeah. person. Yeah, so. you're exactly right. And then sharing all that too, like you actually give that path because I've noticed that speakers that don't share everything for whatever reason, whether they're just trying to withhold information or they're not comfortable with being that vulnerable it's hard for the audience to actually understand how they went through that whole process then because you're leaving information out. So Mm -hmm. we're not, we're not in your shoes. We're not in your brain. We can't figure out those things that you left out and and which really goes into, you need to really over explain and over communicate 
as well because we have all this information up here we know what's happened in these stories but if we don't explain them with all the details then and all the mundane stuff we're not going to be able to actually get that message across properly and that happens so often in communication where you think you give everything but you don't give everything i'm sure you dealt with that in military and and really even in insurance and everything as well oh absolutely it's it's uh, it's a, a handful of things. One, it's fear, and fear is always your own your own feelings, your own uh, assumptions that are usually incorrect of what you think is going to happen. Nine times out of ten, your fear is wrong, right? It's just holding you back. But two, it, it it's it's like being inauthentic. There's something that comes with being just super transparent, candid, and authentic, like authentically you that people are going to look at that and they're going to appreciate it. They're going to be like, man, mm. that guy, that guy is real and raw, but man, that was a, that was very powerful story, you yeah. know, and it'll leave a, it'll leave a mark. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And some of that's uncomfortable, especially for people in the South. I feel like we're, we're more reserved. They're not going to say things like that. Everything's supposed to just be perfect. They're not going to be very straightforward with yeah. things. And when you are more straightforward, it leaves no room for questioning. Yeah. And definitely the more straightforward you are, the more details you give, the, the better off everything is in the long run. Because the only way to communicate properly, in my opinion, is to put everything out there. <laughs> So yeah, if you leave absolutely. something out, you never know what if that's the piece of information that somebody needed to tie everything together. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, absolutely so right. I want to go back real quick. And, it, and going back to the stages, you talked about you've got a couple more lined up for 2023 and yeah. everything. And you also talked about now speaking with us ROTC groups. So some of uh, some of it was through your insurance company. Some of it's been just talking to other insurance companies and mm. insurance agents, but then also ROTC. So how are you going about finding these different stages to be on? Obviously your background has, has a play in this and I'm not sure if that's everything, but how are you going about getting on these stages? So, um, so when, well, I'll break it down. I'll, I'll tell you how, to, how it actually happened. So to get to, when I got in these stages of 2023, I actually just signed the contract yesterday. So it's it's like I'm really excited about it. This is, and these are nice. like big stages. So um the they they found me because of my content online. Mm. Because and I've so in the insurance industry, I've made I've made a name for myself. Like people either love me or they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't pull any punches, man. I'm mm. I'm very like strict, I'm very regimented but I'm also very candid. So if someone, and people will reach out to me for help, like, yeah, how'd you do that? And I'll be like, I'll tell them. And I'm, there is no secret sauce. There is, there's nothing secret about what I do. I just do the damn work, right? Yeah. That's how it is. And so, and then they'll tell me what they're doing and I'll be like, Hey, can I be, can I be honest with you? Yep. Okay. You're making excuses in your life mm -hmm. and in your business. You're treating this like a hobby. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and I'm very, very candid. Some people take it and they're like, thanks. I needed that wake up call. Some people are like, man, that guy's a, this guy's mean. <laughs> like, like, I don't like that guy. So, yeah. so, but I, I, I've, I've got the bona fides to back up what I'm saying. I've done yeah. the production. I've broke records, sales records, um, and I've made a massive impact. And so, um, now what I've done is I just said, you know what, like what I do is not special. I'm, I'm not special. There's no one in insurance that's really special. And so, I, I, and there's so much information out there. People are, are drowning in information, but they're starving for wisdom. And it's that actual very good strategies and applicable um, tactics that they can put into their business that will help them succeed. That no matter who it is, it will, they apply it, it'll work. And so I've just devoted my entire Instagram and my social media presence and LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, everything to make sure that all I'm doing is I'm putting that stuff out there and I'm always teaching people about sales, leadership, mindset, marketing in order to help them in their business, whether they're in my company or not, I don't care. I just want to help agents succeed because there's, there's like 3 million licensed agents in the entire insurance industry. And there's probably about less than 5% of that is actually writing business and like being successful. And that's just, wow. that's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. So, um, I've been doing this very consistent and this is a consistency game. So I think first and foremost, you gotta, you gotta have something that you are, that you're good at, that you understand. And, and everybody has something they're good at, right? 
And then you got to get so undeniably great at it that people look to you and say, man, how are you doing that? And you're like, let me show you. And you start to help people. And as you start to help people, people will talk about you. And as people talk about you, more people will come. And then you'll say, you know what? I want to create a platform where I can just help people on a large scale. So maybe it's going to be doing reels, doing videos, doing a YouTube channel, starting a podcast, whatever it is. And then you're going to start pushing out there. And it's about consistency. Do people watch my stuff at the beginning? No, not really. But over time, more and more people are watching it and I'm getting more views. And it's just because I'm just continuously doing the work. I got through that. I got um, uh, the the attention of somebody that puts these events together and they're like, dude, I love what you're doing on your content. I love what you're doing insurance. I want to get together and like do some collaboration, which started that conversation about getting on stage. And so now it's like, this is more of the big leagues. Like, and I'm like, I'm going to knock this out of the park. I want to make nice. sure that when I get on stage, I want to be the best speaker there. I don't care who else is going to be there. Right. And just, and just for, just to, to understand the scope of this stage last year at the same exact event, Ed Milet spoke. Wow. So that's the, yeah. that's the caliber of stage that I'm speaking on. So I'm like, I want to be the best speaker there. I don't care who's there. Yeah. Right. I want to knock this out of the park. So what I did was I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start um, getting on more stages and start honing. I'm going to get one message that I, that I like master. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to start saying it to everybody. So what did I do? I went to Toastmasters and I signed up for Toastmasters in Dallas. And so now I'm just going to be doing Toastmasters over and over again. It's not hard. Go look it up because go look up Toastmasters and you can, and you can, one, you can watch other people speak. You can learn from people, you can get critiqued, and then you can have your own message. And the message doesn't matter what it is, as long as you have something that you're good at. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my, my COO for my company, um, a good buddy of mine, Kevin Vega, uh, I said, Hey dude, I want you to, uh, get with all the local high schools and find a way to, that I can speak to students. And so he was like, and so he started reaching out for me and just, he said, Hey, actually I've got an in with a, with an ROTC department. We can start there. And it's really easy for us to get in because my prior military experience and service. And so I was like, dope done. So nice. we're doing that. And then there's a, there's a, there's all kinds of like public speaker associations with different cities. Like Dallas has one. I'm sure that most major cities have one um, that you can go be a part of. And what they'll do is they'll actually find little events that you can do for free, but then they'll like take note of how you perform and how well you are on stage. And when people want to get, Hey, we want to speak on this, they will actually refer you. Mm. And so there's a, there's a lot of different methods you can do it, but honestly, you just got to get in front of a mic, get in front of some people, um, get, start talking get your message out there and just starts. If it starts with two people, three people, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're on stage and three people show up, who cares? Exactly. You got to get those reps in for sure. Got to get the reps in. Uh, dude, that was, that was some great information right there for people to go follow up on and actually put in that work to get in front of people, just start talking, having that one message there being completely dialed in and focused in on what you're wanting to do, which is get on stage. And I do want to ask is especially these bigger stages. Yes. You mentioned about the videos, which is a huge thing. You have to be on social media nowadays. It's your digital resume essentially. Yes. So you're doing the videos. That's, that's great. But did they ask for anything else? Because they obviously kind of stalked you and looked at your social media and saw that. But do they ask is, I know some stages will ask you for like a speaker one pager or a sizzle reel. They'll they ask for different things in order before they decide to bring you on that stage. Do they ask you for anything else? Or he did didn't, provide he, did not, he did not. Um, he'd actually, I, he had seen me on stage because he's in the insurance industry. Mm-hmm. Um, he had seen me on stage with an, with a group of insurance agents before. Okay. So, and so he, he's been, we've known each other for years. Yeah. And so, okay. um, and so he, yeah, and, and he has, he just has a big stage now. And like, he's, this is something that he built up to. So he was like, Hey, like, let's work on something. And I, t- I just came out and told him, I was like, dude, let's work on whatever you want to work on. But I'm telling you right now, I want to get on your stage period and stop. That's, nice. that's my ultimate goal. <laughs> and he was like, nice. All right. Actually, he's like, yeah, man, we can do that. I was like, all right. They, you Let's intimidated him with your presence uh, so i see so you got to intimidate people in order to get on stage that's what i took away from this no, i just kidding. you gotta you gotta manifest you gotta put out the universe bro 
No, you're exactly right, man. You have to say that up front, and which really goes into communication, what we're talking about here. If you don't tell somebody, but it's in your mind that, man, I really would like to get on their stage, but yeah. you never say anything, it's probably not going to happen unless they really know you have heard you saying something about you want to get on more stages. Mm -hmm. But they're thinking about 10 other things. They're not thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. So you got to put it out there. Hey, yeah. would love to be on that stage. What do I need to do to do oh. it? How, yeah. many, how many, how many reps do I need to put in? Like, exactly. Yeah. What would it take for me to get on your stage? That's where I want to yeah. be. And yeah. they'll tell you one way or another, be like, Oh, you're never going to get there. Or be like, you know what? Hey, come on over. Or I need to see you on these other stages first or do these things. Now you've got a plan. Go take action on that. Yeah. Uh, you have to go for that ask. And, and I'm talking to myself some here too, more so with my business. I don't ask enough on that as far as asking for the sell. But you have to go for that ask in order to be able to get on those stages for sure. And, and one last question before we get to our last question here. What, what is your COO, like what does that look like, the emails that he's sending out to reach out to these schools and everything? Because that's definitely a, a challenging thing if you don't know the right person to talk to yeah. and you, you're just coming off like super salesy. So is there any kind of tactics that he's going about, like approaching the certain people? I know he's going with the ROTC, which gives you that background, but is there anything else he's doing as far as from an email approach and the person he's trying to reach out to at the schools? To, to uh, not, not that it, not to skirt this question. I don't know what he did. Okay. He's, that's he, fair. He's my, he's like the wolf. If you ever seen Pulp uh, Fiction. Yeah. So I'm just like, dude, I need this to happen. And I don't even ask how he does it. He just <laughs> does it. And so I'm like, dope. He was like, I was like, I literally texted him and I was like, bro, I need to get as many reps in as possible. I need you. And I have a, an executive admin, uh, Amber. I need you and Amber to uh, start finding as many stages. I don't care if it's four people. I don't care if it's 400 people. Yeah. Like I need to get, as, I just want to practice my message that was in like as many times as possible between now and July next year. So, nice. um, and I was like two good places to start. I told him I was like two good places to start are Toastmasters and high schools. And so yeah. he was like on it. And then like a couple yeah. hours later, he was like, Hey, Amber took care of Toastmasters. Should we, we got you logged in and like, we did your membership and she's getting it set up now. And He's like, I, I'm doing high schools. I actually got an in with an ROTC department. So we're going to be speaking to some ROTC cadets. I was like, dope, rock on, bro. That's funny. <laughs> so I, I didn't even ask him how he did it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I just curious. I, I know you said you'd got him to do it. So I don't know if you had any details on that, because that's always a good thing to know about too, in order to get into those schools to get on those stages and everything. Yeah, but man, I appreciate you coming and sharing all this value. And I know you've talked about this a little bit, but let's dive in deeper on what that message is. And the, the last question I always like to ask everybody is, if you only had one message you could share for the rest of your life, what would that message be? That's a good one, bro. That's a good one. Um, so, you know, just to, I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a reduced form of like what my speech would be and try to keep it as quick as possible. Um, you know, when I was, when I was in insurance, I sucked and I was bad. When I first got in, I was really bad. Um, and I, and I got to this company and, uh, there was this guy who's a top producer. who's really good. Like he was just crushing it. So I'd like reach out to him. Cause I'm like, dude, he's successful. I'm just gonna do what he's doing. Right. I'm just gonna follow him. And so I'd reach out to him and say, Hey man, what you doing? And he was like, well, what, what leads you using? What are you doing? Like what's your sales process? Blah, blah, blah. And he lived in Chicago. And so he was like, Hey man, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be in, um, Dallas every once in a while. Cause I buy leads out there every, in like every month I buy like a, every, every week I buy leads and I let them just build up for a month. And then I fly out there for a weekend. And I just crush it for one weekend. And I was like, yeah, yeah, dope. So, so just, just for numbers purposes, so you guys understand, um, average agent does $10,000 of sales a month. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I, up at that point had done a max of 3000 in a month, which is not a lot. It's pretty bad. Mm. So it was November. It was the Saturday before Thanksgiving, November, 2018. He was, uh, he, I think it's like November 18th. If I believe if I remember correctly, um, he shows up and he calls me, it's a Saturday night and I'm out, I'm out with, with some friends I'm drinking. And he's like, Hey man, um, uh, I'm, I'm in town. I just finished my appointment. Do you want to meet up? And I was like, yeah, 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 definitely. 
So uh, he comes in, uh, we meet up and, and he meets where we're at and we ended up separating off and we went to um, Deep Ellum in Dallas, if anyone knows that. And there's a place called Serious Pizza. We went and had a slice of pizza, had a beer. And so we sit down, we got our food and I was like, hey, bro, how'd you do? And he's like, yeah, my last appointment, I just got done and it was, uh, I ended the, the weekend at 33,000. Hmm. And I about spit my beer out, bro. I was like... <laughs> 33,000. I was like, is that so much so far for the month? And he's like, no, no, no. That's for the last two days. So I was like, you gotta be what? Like, this is my backyard. You did 33,000 in two days. I can't even do 3000 in a month. Mm. Like, and I was like, dude, 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 give me the secret sauce. Tell me this. Come <laughs> on, bro. Like out with it. Right. And, and by the way, this guy is, is, um, a Russian American. He's had a citizenship for one year. He had the thickest Russian accent and he looks like grew from despicable me. So this guy is not like exceptional sounding or looking by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> if this guy's doing it, like, what am I doing? Right. So he says, you know, he like leans in. He's like, Greg, let me ask you some questions and let's see if I can help you. All right. Sounds good. And he's like, so, uh. Hey, how, how are you doing with leads? Are you buying leads each week? I was like, well, you know, I bought leads and this, that, the other, like a couple of weeks ago, and I'm trying to get a return on them before I buy some more leads. And he was like, oh, okay. All right. He's like, what about, what about, uh, your dial days? Are you controlling your schedule and just dialing and making sure that you send them right about appointments? I was like, well, you know, I'm dialing like every day. I'm dialing like a little bit at different times to see if I can catch people whenever they're on or off work, this, that, the other. And he was like, okay. All right. I mean, what about the appointments each week? I mean, are you setting the right amount of appointments to make sure you have no, enough client sits? Well, you know, last week I set like three appointments. I sat with one or I sat with two, sold one. Okay. All right. What about training? Are you going to training every single training session, every single week, and every, every day that we have training? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I've been in insurance for about a year. I did a bunch of trainings. Like, I, like that stuff I already know, you know, I saw a training the other day on, on this index universal life policy, it was really interesting. So I, you know, I did that, but you know, the other ones like it, I've already know that stuff. And he was like, Oh, okay. All right. And he's like, Greg, Hey man, I know what your problem is. And he leans in, he like gets real quiet. And he looks at me. He's like, you think you're special and you're not. Hmm. And, and he just like, just ripped that bandaid off, bro. And, um, one, I'm a, I'm a pretty, prideful and confident person you know i'm like dude i've deployed to iraq and afghanistan i've been blown up bro you tell me i'm not special <laughs> like, yeah. you know like this is like i was like dude this guy's got some guts and and um he said hey man here's the deal i'm i do what i do because i'm not special either but i follow the system i train every single time because i can learn something from everybody I, I buy leads every single week. I invest in my business because this is a business and it forces me to act to make sure that I'm resolving every single lead. I lock down my dial days. He's like, guess what? My dial days are Monday and Thursday. You know, what's this next Thursday. It's Thanksgiving. You know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be dialing. How many people are going to be like, Oh, I can't dial because it's Thanksgiving. I can spend time with my family. He was like, this is a business, not a hobby. Mm. Guess what? Guess what else? Everybody's home. So guess what? Everyone's going to answer their phone. <laughs> and then when they're like, why are you calling me on Thanksgiving? Like my boss is making me work. And then they're going to feel bad for me. And then they're going to set an appointment for him with me. And he's like, and I, and I set 30 appointments a week. No exceptions, no exceptions. Man. If I don't set their appointments, I'm not getting off the phone till I do. It was like, I hold myself accountable to my schedule. I hold, I said, I, I follow the basics. And then he held up his phone and he had a little, he had a little, thing on his phone. <clears throat> he had wrote down his goal. He had manifested his goal. It was his first year in insurance and he wrote $600,000 a year, his first year. Right. Wow. And he was like, he wanted to write 400,000. He ended up doing 600,000. He was like, I wrote this at the beginning of the year. I'm going to write 400,000 this year. And he's like, every single time I look at my phone, it reminds me I got work to do. Hmm. And, and he was like, so like, he, like, it was like all these basic tenets doing, you know, manifesting, putting the law of attraction out there, right? Writing out what you want to do, right? Setting your mm -hmm. goals, controlling your schedule, investing in your business, 
uh, doing, doing the work, doing the dials, training, being humble, right? Trying to learn something from everybody. It was all these basic tenets that I wasn't doing. And I can promise you this, that like when I started doing that, I literally made us, it's, that was such a momentous uh, t- talk that I had with him that I went home and I made a lot of changes. And that, that was at the end of 2018, 2019 is when I sold 425,000. I went from doing very, very little to five Xing, six Xing my production. If I can do it, anybody can do it. If you focus on the basics and re and you take your ego out of whatever it is you're doing. I don't care if you are in a company, if you're, if you're working at McDonald's and you're flipping burgers, right? You better be the best burger flipper out there, period. People are looking at you like, dude, I want that guy to cook my burger, period. Yeah. You better be the best and you got to take your ego out of it and you need to follow the fundamentals. And it's that like that simple. If you do that with your, with your, in your business, you do that in work, you do that in your relationships in life. I promise you, you're going to be successful and people are going to look at you and say, there's something special about you. How are you doing that? Hmm. Man, that I like that. Dude, that is a great story. First of all, the story is awesome, but that message behind that it yeah. is great as well. And I can just imagine that Russian accent and, and I always kind of go off of these people are like, man, I, I just don't know. People are going to think I sound weird. Tony Robbins, one of the, best speakers out there most influential speakers he has a weird voice yeah <laughs> like yeah for real sure coffee he's that. yeah a real, yeah it's like if, if he could do it you can do it because your voice may not be weird like his don't let those stupid things hold you back for sure and simply do the basics man this incredible podcast i appreciate your time, everything that you shared on here, Greg, if people want to follow you, get to know more about you and what you do, where's the best place for them to reach out? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the best place, honestly, is my Instagram. Um, uh, my Facebook's pretty maxed out. I think, uh, Instagram, I'm Gregory, a Birch, B I R C H like the tree. Cause I'm super tall, like a tree <laughs> underscore. I'm like six foot seven. You can't tell on zoom, but I'm six foot seven. Um, and then, and then, um, you can follow me on uh, my, my podcast is the be the difference podcast, which an episode with, uh, Philip is going to be coming up soon. Um, so you can follow me and be the difference podcast. It's on Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, and it's on my YouTube channel, which is just Delta financial, or you can also think research, be the difference podcast and see it there. Those are the best places. If you ever have any questions, I literally, I'm very like, I run my own social media platform. Um, and I answer every single question that comes to me. So if somebody asks me a question about leadership, sales, marketing, anything, and they're like, Hey, what do you think about this? I will give you my honest opinion. I'll have a conversation with you. Um, and I'll do what I can to help. Hmm. Awesome. Man. Well, Greg, yeah, everybody, y'all definitely need to reach out to Greg and Greg, man. Again, I appreciate you so much for coming on, but for you guys in the audience, definitely go back, listen to this again, make sure you like, review, subscribe, wherever you're at listening to this, make sure you're doing that so we can continue to boost the algorithm to get messages out for the guests that come on here to be able to give them the most and make sure that you go and fire up the mic. Real quick, and I know you're closing out. I hate to do this. Yeah, you're good. But hey, uh, for all you listening, I don't care if it's four people, 10 people, whatever. The best thing that you can do, Philip is giving his time and he is trying to provide massive value by having people on here to share experiences and help you in your life. Like the, the stuff that I gave you guys, if you apply in your life, you can change your life today. Okay. So this is a lot of value. These are things that him and I are in apex together. He's been an RT. I'm an RT. Like these are stuff that we pay other people, people that are much smarter, much more successful than us in order to bring this value to you. The best thing that you can do is to share by word of mouth. Talk about this podcast with somebody that you think could also get value from it. Share it on your stories, share it on your Instagram or your social media feeds, whatever, but share this content. And that's the greatest thing that you can do to pay Philip back for his time in order to just produce this for you out of his own pocket, his own time. There's nothing better that you could do. So definitely share this content. <laughs> oh, Greg, man, I appreciate you share, saying that uh, for sure, man. But yes, definitely, please. I would love it if you could share this. It's an honor and a pleasure, Bill, to bring that value, but it would definitely help me out a lot and help 
everybody else that needs this information out as well if you go out and share that but again greg thank you so much for coming on and guys go out there and fire up the mic